Hi everyone, Tom here from Frontend Beginners, and in this video, we'll look at how the Flex Grow property works in CSS Flexbox. For this example, I've set up a flex container that's 1000 pixels wide and given it a gray background. Inside it, I've created three flex items, each with a width of 200 pixels. To understand how Flex Grow works, we first need to understand the basic concept of positive free space. In this example, my flex container is 1000 pixels wide. My three flex items are each 200 pixels wide with a combined width of 600 pixels. In this case, we have 400 pixels of positive free space remaining inside the flex container, this empty gray area here. Flex Grow allows us to increase the size of one or more flex items so that they fill any positive free space that may be available inside their parent flex container. By default, when a flex container is created, all child flex items are given an implicit flex grow value of zero. This value of zero means that our flex items cannot grow to fill the space. As we can see in our example, with the default flex grow value of zero, our items remain at their original width of 200 pixels as specified in the CSS, which is here, and the free space remains available. If we want to fill the free space, we need to give one or more of our child flex items a positive flex grow value, so something other than zero. Let's start by increasing the size of just one of our flex items. As we can see in the HTML, this div here is our flex container and it contains three flex child items with a class of square. We'll target only the first flex item by first targeting its class of square and then using the nth of type pseudo selector with a value of one to select the first element of this type with a class of square, or this element here. We'll give this first flex item a flex grow value of one, and then take a look in the browser. As you can see, the empty gray area inside our container has been completely filled by our flex items, but only the first item has increased in size. A quick check with the Chrome DevTools confirms that flex items 2 and 3 remain at their original width of 200 pixels each, while flex item 1 has grown in size to fill the positive free space inside the parent container. The reason that items 2 and 3 haven't grown is because they still have their default flex grow value of 0 which prevents them from increasing in size. As flex item one is the only element with a positive flex grow value, it's the only element that's able to increase in size. It can be helpful to think of flex grow values as a fraction. The value we provide instructs the browser as to what fraction of the positive free space should be given to a flex item in order for it to grow and fill that space. If our items have a flex grow value of zero, they don't get given any of the free space and so they don't grow at all. Their size remains as it was in the beginning. If only one item has a flex grow value of one, like our first element here, it gets one fraction or one slice of the available free space. As it's not having to share this space with any other elements, this one piece is the entire amount of free space. If we gave two out of our three flex items, each a flex grow value of one, both of these items would now increase in size to fill the free space. The difference here is that the free space will be shared between both items. They're now both getting one fraction of the available free space, each has a flex grow value of one and so one fraction each, 
which means that the free space will be shared equally between them. They will both increase in size by the exact same amount. Let's demonstrate this by also giving our second flex item a flex grow value of 1. So now both item 1 and item 2 have flex grow values of 1. As you can see, item 3 remains at its original size because it has a default flex grow value of 0, while items 1 and 2 share the available free space equally between themselves and both increase in size accordingly. If we give all three of our flex items a flex grow value of 1, they will all grow by equal amounts, each taking one equal slice of the available free space. So what happens if we use different flex grow values on different items? Let's look at an example. We'll leave our first flex item with its flex grow value set to 1. For our second item, we'll give it a flex grow value of 2, and for the third item, we'll give it a flex grow value of 3. Before we look at this in the browser, let's quickly talk about what's going on here. We're still sharing out the positive free space that's left over inside our parent flex container, and we're giving some of this space to each of our three child flex items, so they are all able to increase in size and fill the full width of the container. Each flex item is getting a fraction or slice of the positive free space, but this time the fractions are not equal. We're giving one slice of the space to flex item one, two slices to item two, and three slices to item three. This gives us a total of six slices Effectively, we're dividing the positive free space into six slices and then giving just one slice to the first item, two slices to the second item, and three slices to the third item. As we can see in the browser, all three items have increased in size and the container is now full. There's no free space remaining. However, item one has increased in size by the smallest amount, followed then by item two, and then item 3, which is increased by the largest amount. The amount of positive free space that's shared out between our flex items depends entirely on the flex grow value given to it. If we change item 3's flex grow value to 1, instead of 3, we'll see how items 1 and 3 both increase in size by just one slice of free space, with item 2 increasing in size by two slices. All of our items still increase in size, but item two has grown twice as much as items one and three. Before we move on to the next example, let's delete the flex grow properties from each of our flex items. Flex grow works hand in hand with another flexbox property called flex basis. In short, flex basis determines the initial size of the flex items before flex grow is applied. By default, flex items are given a flex basis value of auto. This makes the items either the width of their content or any absolute width that's been specified elsewhere in the CSS. As I gave each of my flex items a width of 200 pixels in the CSS, their initial starting size remains as 200 pixels. If I remove this property, their width changes to match the width of their content. In this case, the words 1, 2 and 3. When we start with three items all of the same size, as we did in the previous examples where our items were all 200 pixels wide initially, if they all increase by a flex grow factor of 1, they will all end up at the exact same size. They started out at the same size 
and so after growing they end up the same size. Let's change the content in our first item from the word one to the number one so that each item now has an obviously different width. Items one, two, and three are now clearly different initial starting widths. If we now give each item a flex grow value of one by targeting every item with a class of square, so we can do that here in this rule. So we give every one of our flex items a flex grow value of one each will be given the same slice of positive free space, just as we saw earlier. This time, however, the three flex items will not end up the same size. Because they started at different widths and have each been given the exact same amount of extra free space, they'll also end up as different widths. This is a really important concept to understand when using FlexGrow and I've covered this topic in detail in another video. If you'd like to know more about FlexBasis, check out the link in the description below. Finally, let's touch briefly on how the flex direction property affects flex grow. All of the examples in this video have been in the default flex direction of row. If you're working in the column direction, the principles all remain the same However, it's the height of the flex container and flex items that are important, not the width. Items will increase in size along the vertical axis rather than the horizontal axis, so it's their height that will be affected. Any positive free space will be calculated based upon the combined height of the flex items and the total height of their parent flex container. I think that covers the basics of the CSS Flexbox FlexGrow property. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.